Welcome back. In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate by writing a Java program how to in fact connect to our backend database. So before I actually begin writing the program, let's verify whether our PHP my admin or the backend SQL database is set up and also our XAMPP server, which is the personal web server that we installed and I demonstrated how to set up and configure is up and running. So we need those two things before we can write the Java program and then try to connect to the database. And also, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a new database simply and then eventually connect to that. So let's jump right in. Let me go ahead and first open the Java Eclipse editor. So once I'm in the Eclipse editor, first things first, I need to make sure that the MySQL connector is installed right within my project called Java Advanced. So within advanced project, as part of my default package and other GRE system library, I also have the MySQL connector. So once this requirement is satisfied, I also need to make sure that my local web server is running. So I'm going to bring up the control panel for XAMPP. So make sure the Apache, of course, the web server is running. And also, more importantly, the MySQL database is also running. And importantly, keep a note of this port because we'll be using this port within the Java program. So the port number that MySQL is running is on 3306. And the last thing, of course, I need to make sure that my web or my personal web server is also up and running. And I can, of course, demonstrate that by going to PHP My Admin, and that'll make sense. So here's PHP My Admin. I'm connected to the local host at port 8015. And on my left are all the databases. So let me first go ahead and in fact create a database and then I'll demonstrate how to write the Java program to connect to this database. So simply click on new within the PHP my admin backend database and this brings up of course the list of all the databases. So here I'm going to go ahead and create and provide the name of this database. So I'm going to go ahead and say something like Java rocks and then the type is standard is UTF-8. Okay, that's a standard format. You can pick any other format that you like. But on the web, that's typically standard. So I'm just going to scroll down. Somewhere on the bottom here is UTF-8. And I'm going to use the Unicode 520. And this is multilingual, right? So I'm just going to use this. And click Create. So now our new database has been created. Now keep in mind that once the database is created, the default password and the admin username is root as the admin user, and then of course blank as the password, so no password at all. So at this point, all we've done is simply created a database, and there are no tables yet, nothing that we've actually created. So I can of course create tables directly from here, but that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to in fact use Java, write a program, that's going to now take care of everything else, okay? So the name of, of the database is Java Rocks. Our username is root and password is blank. Let's switch back to our Eclipse editor, perfect. Let's go ahead and create a new class. So I'm gonna go ahead and simply right click on default package and begin our program by choosing new, click on class. I'm gonna call this, you can give it any name, right? So I'm going to call this database connectivity, click finish. And this will create a public class called database connectivity. So I'm going to go ahead and first import all the modules, import java.sql and recall that we need the driver manager, right? As one of the requirements. So let's go ahead and do java.sql and then dot driver manager semicolon. Also go ahead and import Java dot SQL dot connection. Now I could just use the asterisk, right? So I could do Java dot SQL dot asterisk or everything, right? But I'm just going to demonstrate step by step so you actually list out and see all the modules. Semicolon and then one more. I'm going to go ahead and import Java 
dot SQL and then the SQL exception. Perfect. Semicolon. Make sure my syntax is correct. Should be not a comma. Perfect. So once I'm done with this, I'm going to go ahead and come down after my public class. And of course, the name is database connectivity. And first, I'm just going to go ahead and do a system.out.println and just display a message. That's all I'm going to do here as I write this program. So the message is going to be, let's say, MySQL JDBC connection testing, right? It's the title. So let's go ahead and do dot, 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 or something like that, making things fancy here. And I'm going to go ahead and say MySQL JDBC connection testing, semicolon after this. Once I'm done, then I'm going to go ahead and do the try, curly braces, and then bring up my class for name. And then here, I'm going to use the string called com.mysql.jdbc driver. Close the quotations and then, of course, the semicolon. I'm going to go ahead and also close the curly braces. Next, make sure I have the exceptions. I'm going to say catch. And if it's not found, right? So if the class not found, throw an exception, exception E. Open the curly braces, do a printout. So system dot out dot print in and then just any text right so something like where in the world is your my sql jdbc driver perfect so just a message to be displayed if something happens right so make sure my spellings are correct great so once i have this next i'm going to go ahead and to the stack trace. So e dot print stack trace simply and then finally do the return semicolon. Perfect. Now we use the try and catch exception and then I use the catch word right instead of throw or throws that we talked about in previous lessons. But let me in fact bring this up one more time right so I have a notepad here perfect so let's go over this because I want to make sure you understand why do we use actually the try block and then the catch exception so the first things first we use the try block and this will execute basically the code which can throw exceptions that's why we use the try block itself the catch block itself will be used whenever an exception is caught and is thrown in the try block. That's why we use the catch. And notice, if I move this aside, this is our try block. And then, of course, I also created the catch block. So whenever the exception occurs, it's going to, where it catches an exception, is going to throw it. And then, of course, we may have the finally block, which in this case I didn't write. But if you do, that's fine. The finally block is called in every case after the try and catch blocks even if the exception isn't caught if your previous blocks break the execution flow the throw keyword so again you can use the catch you can use the throw or you can use the throws all of these are exception keywords the throw keyword will allow you to throw an exception which will break the execution flow and then can be caught in a catch block and finally you could also use the throws keyword in the method prototype and this is simply used to specify that your method might throw exceptions of the specified type and it's useful when you have checked exceptions for example or exceptions that you have to handle that you don't want to catch in your current method so just a recap on these try and then exceptions great let's minimize this perfect so once we have the return i'm going to close the curly braces let's continue with our code let's go ahead and do system dot out dot print in now at this point we're not even connected to the database right we're just 
setting things up. So we're just setting the exception up first. We set the title up on top. And now I'm just going to go ahead and do system.out.println. And then here I'm going to go ahead and say the JDBC driver is registered, right? So I'm going to say MySQL JDBC driver is or has been successfully has been successfully registered something like that perfect semicolon and then I'm gonna set the connection so using the connection dot connection equals null open up next try block for the connection right so this is going to be the connection equals driver manager semicolon and next I'm gonna go ahead and actually do the connection so my driver manager or I'm gonna say let's say dot get I can do dot get right here in the next line and then with this dot get connection that's what I'm looking for I'm gonna go ahead and simply execute the JDBC driver and specify the path to the database okay so here let me scroll down actually so you can see perfect so after I do this right open the parentheses so I'm gonna go ahead and do JDBC and here's the syntax by the way so you may want to note this down and remember it and then colon mysql colon and then my local host right at the web server colon and recall our sql port was 3306 and by default too that's 3306 unless you change it and then forward slash the name of our database which was java rocks that we just created a while ago and then after the name of the database I'm going to go ahead and do comma and then of course root comma and then my password if there was a password I would enter it between these two quotations okay since there is no password so we leave it blank semicolon goes outside the quotations by the way so let's fix up the syntax here quick great all right, so once I have the root here, I need a comma and a quotation after root. Much better. So next, I'm going to go ahead and simply do the catch, right? So bring this up here. After the curly braces, I'm going to go ahead and do catch. And this time, it's going to catch the SQL exception, E open the curly braces do a system dot out dot print in and if the connection was to fail right I need to specify this in this printout so connection failed please check and try again close the quotations in the semicolon and then of course the print stack so e print stack trace method and then of course my return so I'm going to go ahead and do the return with a semicolon close the curly braces make some extra lines and some space so here I'm going to use next and do the condition right so I'm going to say if the connection is not equal to null open the curly braces let's do a system dot out dot print in and I'm gonna say you made it or something like that take control of your database now right so let's go ahead and do success you can take control of your database quotations and I'm going to go ahead and do the else since I'm using if I need to use the else curly braces simply do another printout system dot out dot print in and here I'm going to go ahead and say 
failed and just in case to make the connection so failed to make the required connection and of course the semicolon and close my curly braces make sure all the rest of the curly braces are closed if any okay I need one more perfect let's go ahead and fix up the print ends the syntax of course is out and now let's go ahead and do Java print in that's done let's go ahead and fix up the print in on the top that's fine here's one I need to fix this also make sure I have system dot out dot print in and of course what I missed gravely was the fact that I need to specify the keywords so let's go ahead and do public static I went too fast right void main and then of course string with our command line arguments if any and then I'm gonna go ahead and open the curly braces perfect much better next I'm gonna go ahead and fix the print in here for Java to recognize this awesome and then the connection is going to be let's say without the dot here and of course let's fix up the E here perfect awesome so let's run through this code before I execute this we imported certain modules right we did our public static fine did a printout so this is our, our title essentially right that is trying to connect using the JDBC the try block with some exceptions and then of course defined the variable called connection another try block for the connection and here we use the driver dot get connection and then the path and this is important this is something that you need to simply memorize and as you practice more it'll be easier for you so we use the driver manager and then the get connection method and specify the path so make sure this is correct and then of course we use the if connection is or not equal to null then give me a display message or a success message so let's go ahead and run this and see what happens I'm gonna go ahead and click on the one button okay let's take a look so where in the world is your JDBC driver the class not found and the driver is not found right so let's verify whether I have the connector so the connector is there which is great what else am I missing here so everything seems right let me fix up and make sure that a driver JDBC driver is here okay here's the problem I simply missed the dot after the JDBC okay so sometimes a dot can really throw out your program and give you lots of errors and by the way just so you know uh, Netflix back in I believe five or ten years ago or something like that their entire site was down because of this one dot in their back-end program using Java so keep this in mind this one dot can be very powerful right when you're coding so this is correct now my SQL dot JDBC dot driver let's go ahead and run this again save and launch dialog box appears click OK and perfect awesome so we are now finally connected to our database called Java rocks because the success output has been displayed so now we can take control of our database that means our connection is successful and where's our connection here's our connection okay so this part right here is basically our connection to the localhost 3306 Java rocks and then we logged in as the root or the admin so practice a couple of times setting up your web server setting up your database at the back end and then of course writing a Java program and then connecting to the database so with this let's move to the next lesson